Hi, welcome to my build of King Combat, a 40 inch wingspan flying wing. In the last episode I got the basic structure of the wing completed and now I need to start thinking about doing the sheeting. I'm not sure whether I'm going to do all of it in this episode or just some of it. And I need to think about fitting out the servos, uh, where the fuel tank's going to go and the battery. So it's going to be quite an interesting an interesting part of the build. I've started by cutting out some of the, the fins, I guess we call them, and they just fit like this. This one doesn't fit at the moment, it still needs just trimming a little bit. I, I'm slightly concerned about this because in the instructions and on the plans it just shows that basically um, you sheet you sheet this narrow section here and then you just cut a slot, slot it in and glue in. That is probably fine for flying but if this comes down upside down and puts a little bit of pressure on that it's just going to snap this off here it's, and so I'm, I'm looking at what I can do to make that a little bit more secure, a little bit more uh, uh, robust really. I think with plans like this I, sometimes I can't help myself um, just making them a little bit stronger, a little bit more resilient and I think sometimes they're built by people who fly very well and they want something that's very light and very easy. I'm looking for something that is all those things but I want it to be durable as well. So anyway I'm going to have a look at, at how I can perhaps fit those in a little bit more secure. I've done cut some of the, uh, not that, I've cut some of the, the sheeting ready for, for doing the sheeting which will be nice and I've got the wing tips but I think, I think the wing tips will probably end up going on after I've done everything else. Uh, these will probably be right at the very end. I can't see the point in doing them now because they're going to just get in the way really and, and risk getting damaged. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is these fins and the, the sheeting, certainly on the underside. So I'll get on and do that now and we'll come back and have a look in a bit and see how we've got on. Well, I've now come up with a very simple solution just to make this, this fin a lot more robust on the wing. I, I don't think I've said earlier that the, the fins are cut from 2mm plywood. On the plans it says 3mm balsa, but I just thought that's not going to be particularly robust if it comes down and, 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 and takes a knock. And 2mm plywood it's pretty strong and it will be stronger than the balsa and there's probably not a lot of difference in the weight I, I, I don't know I, I'd, I'd quite like to actually test it and cut one out in balsa but I don't want to waste the balsa so anyway what I've done is I've just where the slot is wide I've actually just put some balsa either side and glued it to the ribs but on this flimsy rib here which is only 1.5 mil, 1 16th of an inch, I've actually extended that all the way down. So I've made this weird looking uh, sort of false rib and that just slots in against this 1 16th, 1.5 mil and it gives strength to the top of the rib but it also comes down to the underside of the rib to give support all the way down to kind of a little bit of strength against that twisting motion. So that just slots in easy enough. If you can get it in. Yep, there we go. So as I said, that goes against the 1.5 mil. There, like that. I've then got a piece of 10 mil balsa. I still need to, to fit this which will be CA to this side and it just creates that narrow slot. I had to actually sand it to fit just to, to custom, custom fit it so it was a nice smooth fit and also on the edges either side I just put a little bit of a, a 45 degree chamfer just so that that would, that would slot in quite easily and that, that seems to be quite a, a, a good solution. I think that will 
that will work quite well. You can see this coming down to the underside there. So I'll get on and do the other side, the other side now, and um, and then we'll move on to whatever I'm going to do next, which is possibly the sheeting or fitting out some of the stuff. But it'd be nice to get these these fins sorted, and then we can start sheeting some of this. I've started to do the sheeting now. I've just done this one top edge. I decided to do the the top first because when I put the fuel tank in, I'm going to bring the a hole out here with the fuel fuel line and I want to be able to reinforce that and be able to get to the underside of it easily and if I've already got the sheeting on the underside I won't be able to do that so I'm doing the top first I've, as I say I've done that side and I thought I would just quickly do this side and show you how I do it I'm just CAing it on and it's, a, it's really simple the way I do it so I don't, I don't cut the, the sheet to length that way, I just leave it full width. I trim it that way about a quarter of an inch, five, six, seven mil, slightly longer. Just, I, I trim it just to make it easier. So, line up this, take the lid off the CA, line up this back edge here with the spar. Now it's really useful to have a piece of plastic because if not, you're going to stick your fingers to your plane at some point. It just allows you to put a little bit of pressure on. Now I'm just putting a little dab in that corner just to hold it in place. And now I'm coming down this side, or this end, sorry, and I'm just going to put a dab there. So put the plastic on, get a little bit of a little bit of pressure, get it lined up and just a very small drop of CA. And now, just check that's right. Yep. Very slight overhang on this back, but that's fine. That could be sanded off or, or left, to be honest. A little bit of pressure. Another bit of CA there. Move along. A little bit of pressure. Right, now that should be held in place fairly well, and, oops, this end hasn't actually taken, let me do that again. Now, what I'm going to do now is hold this on the end, don't know how easy that will show, but it's, it's tacked at the ribs, but not in the middle, and it just lifts up a little bit in the middle, so I'm going to go along now and just tack. It's quite hard for me to, to do this and still show it on camera, so I've just tacked the middle. Okay, so now we've got that back edge nicely stuck down. We're going to turn it over and just CA it from the underside. So, I will just start at this end, where's my plastic? And I won't try and do it all at once, I'm just going to do up to the centre point. And again, move this along, just make sure the balsa is cheating is tight against the rib and just a a dab to hold it. There we go. Now I'm going to do the same again but work my way along. Just do this centre one here. But I'm not going to come right up to the leading edge at the moment. I'm just working my way up gradually. Right. Now that's stuck on all of the ribs and what I'm going to do now is go along and just hold that into place, a bit of plastic, onto that leading edge nice and tightly and just put a dab, put a dab in the middle and all the way along. Okay. 
Right, so there we have the sheeting in place and it's nice and tight against all of the ribs and so what I'm going to do is just run down all the seams very quickly with a, a bead of CA to make sure that's not going anywhere. Whoops, I'm going to do this a little bit too quick, just spilt some. <laughs> now that is glued into place, all that's left to do is to trim it. So I'm going to turn this around and place it on the edge of my table. Does that still pick up? Just move the camera down just a little, oh no it does pick up. And I'm just, I've got a, a number four scalpel with a quite a big blade, it's a number 26 and it gives me loads of room to get in there and just run that scalpel down. It's nice and steady. Well, I've now prepared the sheeting for this, this back section here where the servos are going to go. I haven't glued that on yet, I thought I'd just show you what I've done. So I've, I've cut that to fit. I've put a spruce 6mm cross member here with some triangular stock just to hold that nice and solid. And I've put in some 6mm um, balsa here just to hold, just to support the, the edges of this because this is only 1.6mm, 16th of an inch, so it's, it's, it's really thin. So I just thought I should support those edges really. So that will just fit on there nicely and the servos should just fit in without any problem at all. So it will just leave the top of the servo sticking out. <clears throat> Before I complete the sheeting on this underside here, I thought I ought to be sorting out the, the fuel tank arrangements because access is going to start to get limited. So I've got my fuel tank here nicely slotted in between these spars and I've got a couple of pieces of balsa either side just to stop that, that from moving. It would have been nice if I could have sandwiched it in foam or held it in foam to limit the vibration but that was never going to happen really. It's just it's too tight a fit so I, I'm sure it would be fine. The, the good side is that it's more or less the centre of gravity so as it empties it shouldn't have any impact on, on the flying characteristics hopefully. I've left the tubes quite long, there's two, there's a, a, a feed for the engine for the carb and there's a filler come vent and if I just turn this over we can see here they just come out the top surface of this leading edge that's quite neat, quite nice and the engine just sits on there this is the, the Thunder Tiger 15, but I may be putting on a, a, an Irvine 20. I'm, I'm not really sure yet. I need to have a, have a think about that. But now, let's just turn this back. But now that's, that's done, I can start to get this sheeting done. One of the things I need to think about before I complete the sheeting on this underside is doing the, the fuel proofing because I'm going to fuel proof this area and here and maybe a little bit in this compartment but I can do that later but here I'm going to lose access once I do the sheeting here from this top surface I'll be able to see in to there uh, in, in, into there but I won't be able to get onto this section here so before I, I sheet this here I'm going to fuel proof all this, all this bay here and then we can get on and finish the sheeting. Well, I've got the, the leading edge sheeting finished now. I've got the cap strips fitted on all of the ribs. And it's surprising how much rigidity that has, has given it. And yet there is absolutely no weight to this. It is as light as a feather. Got the, the fins and they slot in lovely. Of course I'm not going to actually fit these until I've done the covering and then I'll just slip the covering and, and, and pop them in. I may epoxy them or I may hot glue them, I, I, I'm not really sure. Got the servos, they fit in nicely here, you can see how that's going to work. Oops, wrong way around. You'll see how 
you can see how that's going to work, they fit in nice. These servos, I don't know whether I mentioned it earlier, they're metal geared and their torque is over two kilograms. So they should be plenty enough for the, the flaperons that we've got on the back. I've done the, let me just take those out, I've done the uh, fuel proofing, I've used Zap Epoxy 30 minute epoxy diluted with just a little bit of ethanol to thin it down, which you need to be aware of really speeds up the, uh, the curing time, it probably gives you about five minutes or so. I've, I've done inside this leading edge here where the fuel tank and possibly the battery depending upon the, the CG and I've also done the, 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 the sides here just to make that whole area fuel proofed. I, I, I mixed up perhaps a little bit too much so I thought I might as well use it and do the whole of that compartment and I've also put a bit on the engine mount and around the front here which will need more, more doing. But I'm going to wrap this video up now because um, I'm conscious of time and not, not making these too long. I've still got the sheeting on the underside and I'm, I'm still thinking about this. I, I'm possibly going to sheet the whole lot rather than just the central section but I need to think about that and not rush into it. But this really is as light as a feather, there's nothing to it and I am really enjoying this build. It's such a lovely simple design. There's, there's nothing difficult about it, it's just good building and uh, I hope you come back and see how we get on in the next video with the sheeting underneath and you need to think about the hatch, the, doing the control services and of course we haven't done the, the wing tips yet but the wing tips will, will need to be done. So thanks very much for joining us and I hope you enjoyed it and I uh, hope you come back to see the, the next video.